Good morning there, sweet peas. Basic prep for Mom Myra. I know it's been a while. Been a while since I posted on here. Um, been doing a lot on another app social thing. Um, not really prepper related, but anyway. Um, and just been crazy busy. It is too freaking hot. It is 83 degrees and 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, it's going to be another triple digit day. I'm just so over this. I know that my animals are over this. And trying to keep them cool is the biggest issue. Um, I go out when I'm not working. Um, I go out at least twice a day, sometimes three times a day, and redo their waters. Um, I've been freezing, and this is actually a good kind of tip and hint if you've got animals. Um, I've been freezing um, blueberries and mixed vegetables, like frozen mixed vegetables. Um, I put them in a container, put some water in there, and freeze it. Put those blocks out in um, uh, aluminum foil, like, or not aluminum foil, but aluminum like baking dishes or basting, like turkey basting aluminum foil pans. That's what I'm trying to think of. Woo, um, you can get them at the dollar store. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, super cheap. Um, and that's what I've been doing. Um, I also have been putting those aluminum pans out, filling them up with cold water and putting red clay bricks in there. It's supposed to keep, uh, the bricks actually will stay cool in the water so that the um, chickens can stand on them. Uh, not sure how true that is because I've gone out and checked and the, the bricks don't seem to be super cool. So I'm not sure how that works, but anyway. Um, I'm keeping extra buckets and extra pans and extra things of water in with all of the chickens. Um, I go in, I hose their area down uh, with water a couple times a day. Um, try to keep them really cool. I do have some misters. Um, I'm a little hesitant on setting them up only because it's been so hot that the flow of water going through the hose, I don't, I think it would I think it, would, it doesn't go because it doesn't flow through super fast because the misters are obviously small. So I'm afraid that the water coming through the hose, and we have such a long hose, incredibly long hose to get to the animals, that I'm afraid the water would actually heat up and then it's kind of spraying hot water. So I need to test that out a little bit. Um, I usually have fans. I'll pick, take um, box fans and put them on the cages and have box fans uh, blowing on them but right now the air is so hot that it's just blowing hot wind on them so I don't think it's gonna do any good anyway um, freezing gallon milk jugs and putting it in the water troughs or um, you know the water containers the buckets if you have animals definitely helps as well but I will say that even when you do the big giant uh, blocks of ice or the milk jugs they do melt super fast in this heat and then it's kind of this constant source of depending on how many animals you have how many buckets you have this constant source of redoing and re-putting in and it's it, it is a lot of work when you have animals it's a lot of work I understand that um, and I'll do what I need to do to keep my animals alive and to keep them healthy and to keep them okay that's not actually what I want to talk about here but I wanted to just kind of put those uh, hints out there. Oh, the other thing I started doing was um, you can get the shredded lettuce or get heads of lettuce and um, shred it yourself. And I've actually been putting that in little containers with a little bit of water um, so that it kind of freezes the, the lettuce in a block. <clears throat> and that way with the lettuce, it's not high in nutrients, obviously, if you get le uh, iceberg lettuce but it does have a lot of that water content. So um, you could also do that with watermelon too. So anything that's got a high water base anyway, freeze those and put them out there and it is another source for them to get water. The other tip, you can take your watermelon, put a little bit of apple cider vinegar in your watermelon and then freeze it. Um, and the apple cider vinegar will um, help as a, an electrolyte. You can do like Gatorade and Powerade too, but um, apple cider vinegar is also um, has some, I know not everybody's on board with this, uh, antimicrobial and antiparasitic properties to it. So, you know, there's that. Anyway, okay, on to my story. Wow, that was a long, long intro there. But I wanted to just kind of help out because there's just so many 
issues with heat right now. Um, so we have a population problem. I think everybody would agree with that. So it's been noted that, and I actually was inspired by another person that I watched um, a few days ago. He did this, uh, kind of talked about this. He didn't do this video he talked about. It. But um, he was talking about how in his area, there's another town that's pretty rural, pretty, very, very, very small town, um, kind of next to his. And that in the next couple years, it is estimated that their population will grow four times what it is right now which is huge there's also an estimate that about 10 million uh, illegals come across the border every year so or every year since Joe has you know been in office so that is 40 million people and that's a low estimate I'm gonna tell you right now that's a low estimate 40 million people coming in in the last four years I, I can't even fathom that number I can't so what does that mean for us as preparedness type people? What does that mean for us on what we need to do and the things that we need to be um, aware of? Uh, well, it's gonna mean a lot actually. First of all, continue to stock up and store up any medication, food, water, you know, all the, all the norm stuff and definitely do it because yes, the, two, the next two years, are going to be very difficult and that's what everybody's saying um there is also going to be uh it is believed there is going to be another uh housing crash like in 2008 so just be aware of that uh in your preparedness type plans sorry the sun is just going to be kind of weird right now um so be aware of that as well but when you have a population increase <clears throat> People that are coming across the border illegally or people that are coming across, they're going to migrate to bigger cities first, more than likely. First of all, they're probably going to have families there, but there's more job opportunities there. There's more opportunities for them to get money. There's more services for them, right? So in a bigger area, you're going to have more social services available to those who come across here who don't have anything. That's gonna cause the people that are there to now move into the country and move into the more rural areas, which we are finding here in my county. I have not done a, um, I don't know if, well, I haven't done a census check on my county, but um, we were around, the last time I checked, this was probably three years ago, two, three years ago, we were almost at like 200,000. Um, actually, yes, the last time I did check was around COVID. Um, because I wanted to find out what our population was at the time because they were saying that like 10% of your population in, in any area would die from, you know, the sea thing. Um, and I wanted to see how many that would be and we obviously did not even come close to that mark. Not even close. But what that means is people are going to move to rural areas, people are going to move to country areas and that's going to put a strain on not only the resources that that area has or that county has um, meaning stores supplies um, just land in general utilities things like that it's going to bit more of a strain on their law enforcement blah on and on but they say that two percent of your population is the criminal aspect so if you look at your population take about two percent of that and those are the criminals that are in your area if our population continues to increase then obviously we're going to increase in crime right we're going to increase in a lot of different kinds of crime and we're going to invite that criminal element into our protect or into our um our space our county so now those of us who live here have to be even more on guard or have to be extremely vigilant because there's now an element that's coming in that, that was not there before. And maybe you had a small crime. A crime um, I am having a very difficult time talking this morning. I am so sorry. Maybe you have had a small amount of criminals or you've had a very small amount of crime in your area. Well, the more your population increases, the more criminals are going to come in and the more crime is going to increase and your law enforcement is going to have to increase as well. Now, hmm, here's okay. I am a huge supporter of, of law enforcement. I am a huge supporter. I will 
always back the blue. Always, 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 always back the blue. Always. However, when you are hiring people who are not from your county, not from your area, not familiar with your community, it's very difficult to protect and serve the way that you're supposed to. Protect the community and serve the community, not arrest the community, not go after the community every chance you get because you're trying to prove something. Protect and serve the community because you don't know the community that you're protecting and serving. Now, having said that, I totally understand it is not possible to hire the amount of people that you need for any force in any area that is if you're hiring people only that live in that area because it is very difficult to find people that want to go into law enforcement now. I understand that. So you have to pull from other agencies. You have to pull from other areas. You have to make it more appealing for people to come in so that you have enough law enforcement. So it's really this double-edged sword that's going on. And this is going all in all over the country, not just my area, but all over the country. There is such a shortage of law enforcement that they have to hire out. Now, if you are, I'm just going to put this out there. If you are an LEO that has been hired from another county or another area to move into this area that you're now protecting and serving, my suggestion is that you get to know your community. You get to know the people in your community. You better get out and about and realize what's going on in your community and what that community is about. Because if your job is to protect and serve, then you better figure out who you're protecting and who you're serving. That's just my little PSA right there. But back to the original point of this. We are seeing a huge population increase, which means that our services are gonna be affected, our products are gonna be affected, our supply and demand is gonna be affected, and we need to make sure that we are ready to go and protect it at all possible times. Um, with a new population, there's definitely, and there are a lot of criminals that are coming across the border. I mean, that's a proven fact. And the more that they spread out, and sometimes they are coming to more rural areas because maybe they feel like they can get more, they can get away with more, they can get, they can be kind of more secretive or I don't know. But watch over and protect yourself and do what you can. Stock up and store up. I suggest that you go out and buy whatever pew pews and whatever freedom seeds you can. Um, I think there's going to be another shortage as well. Um, and in California, uh, the ridiculous extra sales tax on those things, um, on pew pews and, free and freedom seeds, um, not only do you pay the normal sales tax, which is high in California anyway, but now you have to pay an, an additional 11% tax on those items. It is ridiculous. There is supposedly a lawsuit from gun owners of California uh, that they have filed against California as this is a unconstitutional tax, which absolutely 100% it is. Um, and I don't believe this was voted on. I think this was passed by Newscom, um, the, the ass hat, but this directly affects my daughter's business and it pisses me off. But I suggest you go out and you start do, excuse me, God, there goes, start doing what you can to stock up and store up because the population is not getting any lower. It is going to continue to grow and it is going to continue to affect us. All right. I have a lot of other stuff to talk about too, but this is a long video, so I'm going to cut it off right here. So do what you can, stock up what you can, and really focus on your family and your community. Don't forget about your community. All right. That's what I have to talk about today. Hope you guys have a wonderful, amazing day. Once again, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out. Hope you guys have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.